In the previous video, we looked at the mechanisms of splicing. We looked in the first one at group one and two introns, which are self-splicing introns and RNAs. Then we looked at the function of the spliceosome. Now we're going to look at the last thing that happens for mRNA processing to make the mature mRNA. We're going to look at three prime polyadenylation. All right. If we go back to the mRNA processing at the beginning when we looked at how we make the 5' prime cap, I mentioned that as the mRNA is being made, there's recruiting of what's called a cap synthesizing enzyme. Uh, there were other enzymes previously in the initiation of RNA polymerase that, that uh, phosphorylated this uh, branch down here. The cap synthesizing enzyme sticks onto those phosphates, and the cap synthesizing enzyme is going to ultimately put the cap on there. It consists of these four enzymes right here. It's a complex and it synthesizes those that cap. Once the cap is made, you have what's called the cap binding complex that's going to associate and displace the cap synthesizing enzyme. And the 5 prime methylguanosine cap is going to stick onto that cap binding complex. So you see what it is here. The cap is in red, the cap binding complex is in blue, and it sticks onto that tail of phosphorylated RNA polymerase. That's still there. See that right there? Okay. The reason it does that is because now we need to polyadenylate the three prime end of the mRNA. In the mRNA transcript that comes off of the RNA polymerase, I have this sequence AAUAAA. That's a really important sequence because there are what we call polyadenylation factors and they also attach to this tail of RNA polymerase and they recognize the sequence AAUAAA. In that uh, purple uh, uh, blob that is the polyadenylation factors, we have a protein or enzyme called an endonuclease. That endonuclease clips off everything after the AAUAAA. You see that whole strand is clipped off. So now you just have AAUAAA and the free 3' prime hydroxyl group. Once you have that, we're going to polyadenylate the 3' prime end. That's catalyzed by an enzyme called polyadenylate polymerase, which is going to use many, many, many ATP molecules to put um, a bunch of A's at the very end. So what you'll see is AAUAAA and then a ton of A's. Okay, that, Those A's are also involved in some recognition and they also stabilize the end of the RNA molecule. Okay. And then we have the free 3' prime hydroxyl group. So that is the last part that we're going to see for RNA processing, where we have to make what is called the poly-A tail, or called 3' prime polyadenylation. All right? And that's pretty much all there is to RNA processing in terms of mRNA. However, one thing we're going to have to talk about is how do we get mature ribosomal RNA and tRNA? Because it's one thing to have mature mRNA, but there's a lot of stuff we have to do to these three RNAs as well to be able to fully use a functional ribosome. All right, and in the next few videos, we're going to go over how you make mature rRNA and tRNA. Thanks for watching this video, and subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you.